Before we start, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land we're recording on. For me, that is the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And for me, it's the Wurundjeri peoples of the Kulin Nation. Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome to us. This is me and there's her. Say hi. Say hi. <laughs> Say hi. Say it. Say hi. You know what that reminded me of? When you're a little kid and you get your dad's video camera <laughs> and you set it up. Hey, everybody. I mean, I'm her. And this is her, me. And, and then the other person's just like, and you're, you're, they're going, say hi. Say, say hi. hi. <laughs> you when you go, so- say hi, Angie. And, the, and Angie goes, hi, Angie. <laughs> oh, oh. No. No. Oh. no. God, you've messed it up. (laughs) Jesus. How do I rewind on this thing? Dad, how do I rewind on it? Angie fucked it up again. Oops, sorry. (laughs) Sorry to say. (laughs) All right, start again. Clap. Hi, everyone. This is me, Evie TV, and this is Angie, and uh, we rhyme. Yeah. Say hi, Angie. (laughs) Say hi, Angie. Oh, God. Dad, (laughs) get rid of her. Bring over Rachel. I don't like this kid anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I am crying. I'm screaming because I can fully picture us as children doing it. I know. And you're just getting so cross at me to the point that I have so much anxiety. I can't do anything right. There's a there's a video. Remember that video of the little girl trying to blow out her candles oh and the big sister God. blowing them out and going mm, like this? And that's just you and me to a T. And she, the little girl grabs the big girl's hair and she's just pulling it. It's like pulling it so hard while clenching her teeth and the big girl just keeps that look on her face like... I don't care. I blow them out. <laughs> oh, we'll post that video. But hello, everybody. <laughs> that <sighs> I'm Angie. <laughs> yeah. That was an excellent, excellent laugh. I feel all my juices flowing. I got very sweaty. I feel good. And that's a good thing. And we are back and welcome to us. And I'm glad we started off so positively because I've got a bone to pick with some men on the Instagram. Pick a bone. It's better than picking your nose. Mm. <laughs> oh, Dad. The other day I, uh, look, I haven't had my period in two months and uh, if anybody who hasn't had their period in a long time, you know that that's a lot, especially when you have endometriosis, PCOS and a massive fibroid growing and you're just sucking all the blood out of into it. Anyway, so I decided to be like, you know what, I'm feeling the feels and I saw this really good quote that popped up and it says normalize girls taking off work for their periods and I was like preach loved that right and I did like a mini Angie rant you know how much I love a novel like I'm mad for a novel but pretty much in conclusion was just like explaining you know not only do we bleed out of our nunkers every month and still show up not dying we do bleed for five days and we don't die we also can have like our whole bodies turning on us right like having your uterus adding the outing of your uterus grow on the outside and float off to your bowel or your tubes or things like that anyway most of the responses were quite good you know women really telling me their stories about you know, all their personal health struggles. And there's so many women suffering out there. Then there's some men. And we're talking about cis het men because some men actually have uteruses. So we're not talking about No, those. we're talking about cis, the cisgender men. Thank you for that. Usually I'm spot on with that. Cisgender men that come on the stories. And one, there's this one guy. And he goes, so one day I read a status about girls complaining they deserve more money at work that men are overpaid and it's unfair. Another status about girls should get more time off during maternity leave. The girls are sexualized and disrespected, even though half the population are now on OnlyFans asking to be paid to show their boobs. And now girls are asking for it to be normalized to stay home during their period. May as well just asked to get paid to hang washing on the line and watch Netflix. The working backbone of people these days is softer than a smashed banana. Oh, God. Firstly, most of that made absolutely no sense. I know. That's why it was really hard for me to read. Secondly, the bit that did seem, I seem to understand, is just so incredibly offensive. It's like 
Fuck off, Michael. Fuck off. Fuck off, Michael. Fuck off, J-Rod. Fuck off. I saw a thing the other day about a man having a go at a child. She was called to school to talk to the principal because the teacher had told her daughter that she couldn't go to the toilet when she needed to go to the toilet. So she actually bled through her uniform at school. Then the mother, who was very angry about it, said... If she can't have her period on her own time like this, and this isn't a joke, this is how many men truly do not understand the anatomy of a woman or how periods work. And it's not a hard thing to find out. It really isn't. Ask it's any not. woman you know. We need to normalise. I love that you you said the post was so good, the story. Let's normalise women taking off time when they're on their periods. Let's normalise talking about periods. We've talked about periods on this show before. When we talk about periods, let's normalise us talking about them and let's normalise men listening. Yeah. Because it's a really frustrating thing that, we, number one, we don't talk about it enough and when we do – Often people will go, ew, ew, girl, ew, that's so gross. Um, or men will just take over. Well, how's him just manologuing and mansplaining the situation to me? He man he did a manlog manologue. And I was like, shut up. Did you not read the post at all? I'm not saying I need five days off every month. I'm saying when my entire body is turning on me and I physically, emotionally can't show up and give my all because I'm blowing up inside, I need a day off. And don't make me feel bad because if you were bleeding out of your freaking little dick hole, I best believe you that they would have a day off every freaking month. Bloody pads and tampons would probably be free and there'd be more than the 10 days off. Yeah, this is 10 days. We don't even get 10 months a year. We get 12. So that's not even one day a month off just for an extreme, extremely painful condition that we are all inflicted with um, by nature. That And that aside, there's other things to take your sick days for. This needs to be one of them. This needs to be normalised and not in any way discussed. It just needs to be. People take sick days when they're sick. This is a part of sickness. Yeah. You know, there's female-run companies that have that in there. That's a part of the company that when you have your period, if it's so painful, you can't do your job, do not come to work. Where's your compassion? What kind of a world are we living in? It's because men have never had to deal with it. So no, therefore it's right. not in their realm. It's not in their psyche. They don't, they've never had to think about it. But you know what I think? I, I often say this, like, that's your first home. You should get to know it. Also, if you love sticking your little dick inside of a woman so much, how about you get to know what you love sticking your bits in? Like, doesn't yeah. that make, like, sense, yeah, sense that you should get to know? You want to sex that all the time. How about you get to know it and create it some? Oh, yeah, you want to do all these sexy things to it, and you froth over it, but you don't want to. You don't want to know how it works. But if you don't have your period, how about you just don't comment on it and listen to us? We're not here to whinge. We're just here to let you know that we're struggling and we want to be heard and supported. God, it's compassion, people. I was reading an article in twi on Twitter about myths that, you know, are being debunked, like can you refreeze meat? When I was a kid, we were never allowed to refreeze meat because you would get really sick if you refroze the thawed-out meat. Apparently it's completely fine. Oh. Like scientists have studied it now and gone, no, you can actually can. You don't get sick. It's just got a, a lot more moisture in it because of the freezing process or something like that. And it's like, oh, God, my whole childhood is a myth. It's a lie. My mum used to take out the meat in the morning out of the freezer and she'd put it on the <laughs> – it's a wonder we're not dead. She'd put it on the kitchen sink and leave it there all day thawing out and we'd eat it at night. Yeah, my mum would do that too. Imagine how much salmonella must have – by the end of the day – it, that that's room temperature meat by the end of the day, and then we'd well, would we cook all the salmonella out of it? I don't know, but we were all fine. So we're not really fine, are we? We're all Ish. pretty cooked. <laughs> I mean, it's wrong. What's wrong with us? You know, when um you get told myths and things like that when you were younger, like if you pull a face, 
Yeah, and the, and the wind, wind changes. changes, then you're going to look like that. That's pretty messed up. Isn't it? Do you know, I honestly think that is the most messed up thing. As a child, there was a woman that walked up and down our street, up in the morning and down at night, and I thought she had pulled her face down with her hands and the wind changed and she stayed like that. And I didn't understand that she had Down syndrome. Heavy. This is why you should never lie to children and you should always be really open about everything. That was my first time I'd ever seen someone with Down syndrome. And instead of me or, you know, anyone explaining to me what the difference was, I just assumed. Things like that I don't think you should tell kids but. Things like fairies and stuff. Like I, I think it's nice for kids to have imaginations like Tooth Fairy or the bunny and stuff. I don't mind it. I think one of my favourite childhood memories is being lost in not reality and switching off and going into my own world with fairies and mermaids and monsters. Well, see, no, I think that is um, that's arguable whether that's, true or not because I think fairies actually do exist. That, that's just moths, girl. Oh. <laughs> I thought, well, they're very pretty, whoever they are. Um, no, how do you know that fairies don't exist? How do you know there's not mermaids? I think there's mermaids. How can we not tell if there's mermaids? The ocean is so magical and mystical. What's that whole world living? Atlantis. Oh, there's an God entire damn. world at the bottom of the ocean that we are not a part of. Just because we're not around it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. How do we know that there are not aliens or fairies or mermaids? There'll be aliens for sure. For sure. Like just because we don't have them in our everyday life. You know, um, I'm talking things like don't lie to your children. Don't tell them when the music's playing on your ice cream truck that it's because the ice cream truck's run out of ice cream. Oh, that one's really messed you up, hasn't it? (laughs) That didn't happen to me, but God, it's messed me up that it's happened to anyone. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's a sick, sick lie, parents. Don't be doing that to us. Unless you're really poor and then that's really clever. <laughs> yeah. But you know what? Parents can really mess with your um, sense of trust because it's like even stuff like, yeah, like the Easter Bunny or Santa or whatever, it's like, you know, real, real, real. Just kidding. And then you're like, oh, my God, for so long, for 10 years, I loved this thing and you've just fully lied to me. So I do I do get that too. Um, or the scary stuff. Like my dad always used to say things like Jack Frost. So if we'd walk out at night and we walk past, you know, those gutters, it's got the holes and you walk. Yeah, the dra- drains. Yeah. So he used to say that um, Jack Frost would, like, gra- if I ran away, Jack Frost would grab my legs as <gasps> I walked by those. Yeah, that's funny but awful. But I was just so frightened of everything because he'd put the fear of God in us about, like, the most ridiculous thing. Yeah. Can I just read out a, a note that I saw today on Instagram um, that someone had forwarded to this profile called Good News Movement? This is just talking, it just made me think of it just then. We're talking about the tooth fairy. This is what a teacher wrote a letter. Dear tooth fairy, <laughs> I'm writing to let you know that so-and-so, let's say Angie, lost a tooth today. It was a bottom front tooth. The tooth was accidentally thrown away during lunch. Please accept this official letter as proof of the lost tooth. I have personally seen the space the tooth left behind. Please visit Angie and provide the usual compensation. Sincerely, blah, 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 first grade teacher. <laughs> I tell you, teachers don't get paid enough. They go above and beyond oh my sometimes. Oh, God, just to keep the spirit of the child alive and be like, oh, my God, that's because so they funny. lost their tooth and they've gone, I'm going to write because I know the tooth fairy. And if I write an official letter, the tooth fairy will believe. So we'll, we'll get you your oh 20 cents. Oh, my God. That is you. so, so cute. So adorable. Oh. See, these are the little things. These are the kind little things that we can do when we're lying to children. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And I don't think – I think it comes down to, like, the individual. Like, you shouldn't – you should never ruin it for anybody else's kid. Like I remember when we were at church one time, Father Joe, the priest, told everyone at that mass, the mass before Christmas Day, that Santa wasn't real and the main focus is about 
um, Jesus, and he said that, and all the kids from school were there, and all the parents were just like, <gasps> "That's proper traumatizing." It was trauma. He couldn't do Christmas masses for ages. People were like, "We don't want him." He's because he's so old, and it was just really like everybody. It was like this big thing that ran around the Sunshine Coast. That Father Joe told all these kids right before Christmas, "Your parents should be ashamed." It's about the birth of Jesus Christ. Santa Claus isn't even real, and the parents were just like, "You've ruined everything." Oh, dear, yeah, Father. Grinch. <laughs> Freaking Father Joe, take your bloody money yeah. and from mass Father and Joe bail. had no fucks to give at all. I've had a bit on this week. I want to touch on um, something that has happened. Um, I had a run in with this fella, a good, I would let's just say eight months ago because you know me, I'm really shit with time. Um, I only want to say his name once because. I don't like to say it because it actually makes me feel sick. Mm -hmm. His name's uh, Simon Blackburn. So I came across his TikToks like a while ago and I posted them and I was just like, hell no. You were so, so traumatized. Like not traumatized, you were so triggered by his videos. And I'm not saying they were just like, yeah, you know, fuck bitches, get money. It was just like, I don't fuck fat girls if they're fat, gays are disgusting. And he called his ex, the baby, uh, the mother of his children, a whore. The stuff he was saying triggered me so, pu- you know how you get so angry, you get the shakes and like you kind of, your eyes go black. Yeah, yeah. I was just like this, and he has such a cult following of these young, impressionable young dudes that he actually, side note, does coaching and he doesn't have any credentials. He's charging young boys for these programs. Jesus Christ. So that was put to bed. He obviously came at me back then with his own little Insta- like TikTok videos being like, oh, Angie's just jealous. She wants to be one of the stats because women to him are either C-U-N-T's or stats. And he had a go at you about being a reality TV person and get back to the jungle and all that kind of thing. Anyway, it came out that he was actually – He's going to be on maths, Mm -hmm. 2022. That circulated. I saw it on the wash and I was just like triggering in, coming in hot again, and I was just like, nah. If there's one thing I have time for right now is sticking it to the patriarchy and calling the men out and telling them this is not okay anymore. So I was just like, nah, get this shit cancelled. I was like, fried Bryce last season have we not learned anything, maths? Well, trust me, this fella is like 400,000 times worse than Fried Bryce. Like Fried Bryce was hard. They were kind of, you know, pulled over the coals about that kind of thing, like having such bad uh, behaviour on TV. So what were they thinking? But I think we know exactly what they were thinking. Yeah. Well, they it's a ratings bonanza. It's like People get angry and people want to watch. It's called hate watching. Because it just blew up, right? And everybody was just like, get this absolute cement head nowhere near our television. Like, heads will roll. Channel 9 came back and said, after seeing his toxic social media content, we will be editing him out of the show. Um, Okay. Firstly... You get a background check solidly and it's 2021. The biggest background check is your social media. It is not hard. To find it all. If you find it all, they can find it all. But then again, he he did a live to apologise. It wasn't an apology. It was a full gaslighting session. It was an excuse. It was just excuse after excuse. He was the victim in all of this. All these people had come on and asked him if he's ever been with a man. And what what was he supposed to do when you get asked that so many times? Of course you go on a homophobic rant then. He said, I just had 17 beers and I was really, really angry about the fact that people were asking me if I'd had sex with men. So that's why I went on this hate speech. The network... I think has got a lot to answer for. I think the um, the production house that's made it, um, but we also have a lot to answer for. If if we're going to watch this kind of thing, I do remember um, listening to an episode of a podcast where the ex- executive producer um, was asked if he feels bad in any way um, about what goes to air on Married at First Sight. And he said when he wakes up in the morning and he sees the ratings, he knows that everything is fine. um, Now I'm misquoting. It's something like it makes it all better. It makes it all worth it. 
And so as long as there's ratings, the, it, nothing will change. They Every season they get someone worse. Last year we got Bryce who was and Jason. They were the worst uh, gaslighting, you know, misogynistic, kind, gross. This is the kind of thing that if we really do want to not see this kind of thing, we have the power. If you don't want people like him to be on a TV show like that, the only thing you can do is not watch. So it's up to you. I know it's just so unfortunate because we do want to watch humans like this absolutely get torn to shreds. But the thing is, humans like this, good or bad energy, they don't care. They just want the attention because there's still going to be women out there that don't know their worth, that will keep fucking these men. The more these women keep fucking these men, the more they'll keep doing it. If we just stop fucking them, they'll have nothing else to do other than to either rot alone or look at themselves and do the work and stop projecting and do better. onto other men and ruining people's lives. So stop giving them airtime. He, In his little rant, he said, I don't need to go up to women. Women come up to me. So don't call me a monster and a predator because women – want to have sex with me. Stop having sex with this person. Stop having sex with him. Stop having sex with men like him. It's the only way to do it. If you even think about having sex with someone like him or him, DM us. We'll talk you through it. Yeah, we'll talk you out of it. <laughs> we will talk you through it. You are worth so much, so more, much more than having something like that anywhere near your person. Well, we've just had Thanksgiving and I've always really liked that one tradition about American traditions, like because, you know, we adopt so many Americanisms and there's so many that, you know, are just like, oh, really, do we need that? But Thanksgiving, I've always thought was one that was quite nice because of the idea of giving thanks. And I still really do like the idea of giving thanks, but I have learnt recently that just like our Australia Day, it represents something that's really quite hideous to the Indigenous peoples of um, Northern America. So um, I do want to just touch on that. The Thanksgiving is modelled on a 1621 um, harvest feast that was shared by the English colonists in America, in Plymouth, in America. Okay, so that's got actually absolutely nothing to do with us. But what that means to um, the Native American people, for them, Thanksgiving is a day of mourning and protest since it commemorates the arrival of settlers um, in North America and the centuries of oppression and genocide that followed that. So I think it would be really good for us to maybe adopt the fact that there is a, th a day of thanks and we can maybe change it to a day of thanks. It doesn't even have to be on the same date um, because, you know, just like our Australia Day, we don't celebrate that. We we call that Invasion Day, you and I, Angie. Yes. Um, so I think it would be really nice for us to take the thanks from it but acknowledge the day for what it is to, you know, some of the oldest people in the world. I had no idea about that. So I think it is very important for us to know that side of it too. So we are not just being, you know, greedy little bitches that are forgetting where it's originally exactly. came from. Exactly. So good idea. So let's still give thanks though because there's not much joy you know, in the world at the moment. So still go out and say thanks and give thanks, but also remember. Remember, so let's let's have a thanks day. Do you want to do one? I do. I'll start. I'd like to say I'm thankful, thankful for my friendship with you, Angie. I love that we're the best of friends and you fill my soul sometimes. You make me so, so happy and you always listen to me, always, and you always laugh at my jokes. <laughs> oh, that was so cute. Oh, I didn't see that coming. Oh, I wish I, like, had prepared a speech of sorts. I'm sad. You did, really didn't need to prepare a speech. I mean, it wasn't really required of you to make a speech, Evie. For God's <laughs> sake. I'm thankful for this moment so I never have to listen to that speech again. 
I'm <laughs> just kidding. Oh my god, I am so thankful for this. Like, I know you just said it, but I'm thankful for these absolute I don't know many people that get to belly laugh as much as we do. I'm Me thankful neither. for those sweet, sweet belly laughs and to have somebody that gets me in all my forms, not just like when I'm giving something to you or, you know, fueling your needs, you you take me on even when I'm a crazy sack of shit. Yes, me too. I, ditto to that. Isn't it wonderful to have friends, a friend, a soulmate that actually sees you in your ugliest times and your absolutely most stunning of times and yeah. loves you for all of it? Like that. that's that's all you want at the end of the day in any relationship, in any connection with anyone is for someone to see you and say, yeah. I love you exactly and how you still, are. Yes, and still love you no matter what. We're, we're so frightened of being unlovable, but you and I, we just keep loving each other sick, warts yeah, and all. what is wrong with us? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this is probably why we just we just never change because we let each other get away with too much. We're like, yes. well, Evie lets me do it, yeah. so you better love me for me. <laughs> you know when sometimes you make a joke, you make a, the same joke that we've made and someone else goes, Oh, yeah, they're like too so, far. Yeah, yeah they're like, like wrong gross. person. Totally the wrong person. I gotta remember where I am. <laughs> so much it happens every time. And on that note, check you never. <laughs> Catch you check never. You, check you next week. Happy Thanksgiving.